We are in the Snowdonia National Park again. And over there is the Brigands Inn. Uh, we're in a place called Machluid, which is not too far from McHuntleth in North Wales. And the deal is, we came in Mark's camper van, and this, this pub is, a, is part of the Brit Stop um, camper van network. And I think you pay £30 a year for a Brit Stop pass. And you can stay in various locations um, around Britain. So basically you just pull up in a car park. I think this was only like maximum of five camper vans allowed in here. So you go into the pub, as long as you buy a drink or maybe a meal, you can stay here for the night. So yeah, it's been a, been a good night's sleep as long as we came last night. And um, we're going to make our way up to the Canneville range. We're going to meet Danny and Leighton. And we're going for a hike come well camp. So uh, the journey starts here. Coid, Cotswold. Um, we're going to travel light today, so we're going to get some uh, dehydrated meals before we meet, uh, meet up with uh, Danny and Leighton. So it's just opened, we'll see what they got. The selection here. All the dehydrated ones at the top. We've got fire pots, adventure food, something to eat. I like the something to eat ones to be honest. They're not cheap. This this one here is. Is that seven? Is that seven pound eighty or seven pound? I can't read that. Seven pound. <coughs> seven pound eighty. I think. Seven pound eighty. And then the ones on the bottom, these wayfarer meals, you've got to boil these in, uh, in water in a, in a pot. I'm going to get that past up on these. Give that a go. I think I've had it before. So you're going to have that. I think I prefer the summit to eat ones, the fire pot ones. I think I'm going to go for the spicy pasta. Arabiata. Give this a try. We are here, the start of the hike. Danny and Leighton have uh, decided to um, press on ahead. We're going to meet them at the Dell in Bothy. Um, the car park is down to the right, down our road. That's currently full, so we've had to come a bit further down and uh, park on the side, on the grass verge. Um, the plan is to get to the Bothy, dump our bags, and uh, do a hike up to a, a, a Voile Grac and maybe a couple of other uh, peaks, but it all depends on time because it starts getting dark and obviously it's uh, autumn here. Um, so we're probably looking about half four, five o'clock ish for sundown. Yeah, so we're gonna. Hike back down the 
the road, the gate to the right, through the gate, and then we follow the road, or the path up, back down and back up towards the Canavai, or sorry, I should say the Bothy first. Weather's good um, at the moment, it's nice and sunny, it's clear, hardly any wind, so let's hope it stays that way for the duration of this uh, trip. And there's a couple of Canavai ponies. That's where we come from, it's down the car park, made our way up the path, around here and up. And this plonker thinks he's forgotten his sleeping pad. Epic fail. If it's not in, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Doomed. Do you ever get a feeling when you know you've forgotten something? something? In the back in mind, you've forgotten something. When I was walking a bit, I thought, do you know what? I asked Sean, I'm going to my sleeping pad. I'm, just, I'm sure it's not in here. So, let's see what I find out now. Safe to say, someone's going to have a cold ass tonight, and it ain't me. <laughs> I've taken everything out of my bag and it's definitely not in there, so... My down jacket, obviously my tent. That's my, um sleeping bag. All my electrical stuff. Oh. You're going to have to find a grassy pitch. I just put down jackets and never done this bag. before. It's the only thing you can do. Or there might be a spare one in the boffy. The thing is, you know what it's like, you're packing stuff and um got a hectic lifestyle, working all the time, we just get home and just I just totally forgot it. Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah, like Mark said, hopefully there's a, there's a spare, something spare in the boffy that I can use, I don't know. God, I'm not happy. Fail, epic fail. Remnants of an old water mill. You can still see the wheel in there. A lot of history in this place. There's Leighton. Hi mate. Yeah, no bad, thank you. Oh. I heard someone shout and I've taken pictures. Hi mate, hi. Like... <laughs> Could you see us up there? I don't know. You can see most people. Hi you... boss. Hi oh, yeah. Hello. You alright? Hi mate, alright. I've pulled a muscle in my chest this morning. Have you? Someone's brushing my teeth of all things. Is it? Like that. And then just felt something twang, so I'm having to fucking turn my head like this when it's got yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You okay? Yeah, man. Right, just leaving the bathy now, and we're going to take a hike up to Voil Grac. I just want to show you um, something I've been sent in the post. Is this hard land down jacket? I'm going to try it out now. We're gonna, I'm going to wear this up to um, Voil Grac to um, have a little first first look at it, see what it's like. And then I'll do um, a little bit of a review of it later so you can see it for yourself. Well, we decided to take a shortcut. Instead of walking all the way up there across the ridge, 
we decide to go up this gully past these horses and then hopefully it won't be as far and we can cut a bit of it out the only thing is it's going to be a bit steeper up this way but we can live with that these horses loads of them look at that my ponies I know the donkey just come into the picture oh that's Simon you should be a comedian don't give it a day job by the way <laughs> Oh, look at that black one. Lady. Oh, she's lovely, isn't he? She's lovely, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Foil crack is 975 metres. So we got roughly 96 metres to go. So, yeah, final push. And there is the summit shelter. Oh. All right. Stark. Hello. Hello. Fancy meeting you here. I know. Mind your head. You need to duck. This is cool, isn't it? Look, there's a big beam there. Hang on, let's get the lights on. So mind your head. Oh, some sort of light. If you push the thing, there used to be a thing to keep that open. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Mind your head, Simon. Right, What's cleaning now? Yeah. Those. Yeah. These yeah. are down yeah. there, I'm there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, we left the shelter. Going back to the summit. And then head back down. That is a summit of Royal Grack. So we're going to head back down now, head to Ghana of and then head back down to the Boff and think about pitching up the tent. Nice now, isn't it? There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where we're going, Ganev Quenclean. And then back down. Formerly known as Ganev Ekaf, apparently. Very enjoyable this, we've done another, we've knocked off another two Welsh 3000s. So there's two more in the bag, which is good. So we're knocking off the 3000s, one by one. Still got a few more to do, but not many left now. So yeah, awesome day. Head back down now and have a look at putting the, uh, the tents up. One of the flattest pits I've seen for a, a camp. Nice views there of the surrounding mountains. So yeah, it's pretty good.
So let's get these tents up. Right, everyone, the tents are up. And I've got to be fair, I reckon this, this is the most level pitch I've ever had while camping. It is almost perfect, I'd say. Look at that. Level, flat. You can't ask for more than that on a wild camp, in my opinion. The only problem is the ground's a bit rocky, but you can't have it all, can you? You know, there's Simon's new tent. He's only put it up once, but he hasn't slept in it because um, our father slept in it the first time he bought it, so he'll give that a You'll give that a go tonight. Minus the sleeping pad. <laughs> so <coughs> I reckon he'll have to um, put a load of coats under this sleeping bag. But it is what it is. We all forget stuff from time to time. But what a backdrop to wake up to. Not too shabby at all. Yeah, and when I bought this tent, it came with the um, second hand it was when I bought it. It came with a, a footprint. It's not the actual footprint that fits the tent, but um, I think it's pretty important because, you know, people are seeing this conversation on the bathtub floor and up the sides hopefully this will stop any moisture lifting up into the tent yeah so Mark said this is going to be the first time I'll be using this tent tonight um, I've seen videos and people say this tent is um, prone to condensation especially on the, the bathtub floor area and up the sides of the walls there so um, yeah, I'm going to give it a test out tonight, which I'm looking forward to doing. Even though I haven't got a sleeping pad, it's going to be a bit uncomfortable, but it is what it is. And then just I've just got to get on with it. So uh, so yeah, um, show this tent performs tonight. Hopefully, no condensation, but we'll see. Just a quick review on a, a jacket we've been sent by a company called Hardland. It's a, a down jacket and as you can see it packs down really small. Um, the, you pack it down from the left hand pocket, there's a little pouch in the left hand pocket. So that's it packed down. I don't, I don't know the weight of it. Um, there's nothing on the label to say the weight but it weighs literally next to nothing. So um, I'll take the, bag, take the coat out of the bag. made of 100% nylon with a 90% duck down filling. We're not 100% sure if it is um, ethically sourced um, like such brands like Rab or Mountain Equipment because they give you, I know Mountain Equipment give you like a, a codex number which you can check online and see where the um, duck down originated from. So if you're <clears throat> A person who wants to buy a down jacket knowing where the down was originated and it was all done with the right standards maybe this jacket is not for you so just be aware of that if you want to purchase one it's well made like I, I've seen lots of down jackets I got about four in total and quality wise I'd say this is on a par with whatever I've got so it looks really good the mask's been wearing it all day he said it's really warm um, it's got YKK zippers, which I think are probably the best you can get any, on, on any garment, to be honest with you. Um, they come in, I think it's five colours, something like that. This is the teal, so it comes with a Napoleon pocket on the front. Um, it's got a drawstring on the bottom. 
and the drawstring for the hood. Yeah, so we're gonna use this on a, or Mark is gonna use it on a few outings now, especially in cold weather. Um, Sub zero temperatures, and we're gonna see how we get on with this. So, I think the price of it is 72 US dollars, something like that. But it says on the label it's actually 189 dollars, but it's nowhere near that price. Um, you can get them on, they got their own shop, Hardland. Um, online shop, we'll put a link in the, in the description of the video and we'll give a link for the Amazon shop as well so yeah go and check it out, it's a nice bit of kit, it weighs nothing it looks well made and it's very warm so um, I'm really impressed with it to be honest with you check it out Right everyone we're in the boffy, the fire's going Danny's on the Stella that's standard. What's Nathan drinking? Heineken? German Pilsner. Okay. I've also got three quarters of a bottle of rum there as well. It's better than Carlin, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, anything's better than Carlin, isn't it, Simon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and guess how me and Simon are adding? Coffee. What the water? They're being civilised for, well, ten minutes, aren't they? Coffee and a nature valley coaching. I don't know if you've seen his floor out, it's like a fucking pop out. Great night in the Boffy, we met some nice people, two couples. Good laugh, great food, a couple of beers. There's my tent, <laughs> my axe tent. Um, we might just be able to see another MSR tent, which is over there. And yeah, so. <clears throat> Basically, all I got is a sleeping, sleeping bag. What I've noticed though, I've tried to get a bit of moisture on the inside of the um, you know, tent or a bathtub floor area. So I'm going to keep an eye on this over the night. Um, I'll have to rough it. No sleeping pads, like we said earlier a couple of times. So yeah, we're gonna go to bed now. And uh we'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning. Uh, it's about half six. Also pretty quiet because there's another tent um, pitched about a couple of yards from ours. They turned up last night, so I think they're still asleep. Um, bit of an update. Yeah, I slept in here last night. I've got to say, without a sleeping pad, um, it's pretty cold in your back. I slept okay, but. Um, you definitely miss it. Um, but it wasn't, as, it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. Just sleeping on the floor like something, but um, you can definitely feel the cold coming off the floor. So I hope I don't make that mistake again and forget my sleeping pad because uh, the colder months coming up now. I don't think it'd be doable sleeping on the floor if it gets like sub zero temperatures, etc. So, but overall, it won't, I don't have a bad night's sleep to be honest with you. 
little update on the tent. Um, no condensation whatsoever in here. Nothing. Which I'm pretty pleased about to be honest with you. So yeah, it's all good so far with this tent. Well, I just went out about 20 minutes ago and, and the stars are good. It's just so clear the sky. And I saw the shooting star, it was just spectacular. It was like it looked like a, a firework rocket. It's sort of like going through the air real slow and just like an ex explode at the end, it's been amazing. I never said they like it. Never seen a shooting star like that before. Oh, that was awesome. So I might have another half an hour and then think about getting up and packing up. Note to self, don't forget your sleeping pads. And now, wind is gusting then. Here we have a morning view of the campsite, a trio of MSR tents, as you can see, cracking back off, absolutely stunning. If I pan, pan around, got a nice um, sunrise coming up. Over towards the Bothy. Uh, Bothy is just down there. Oh, that's a fantastic morning. Absolutely stunning. So far, so good. Like I said earlier, I'm pleased with this tent. Very pleased. No condensation, like I said. So it'll be interesting to see when I take it out in the colder, damper months and see how it fares then. So uh, we shall see. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. I just saw a horse go round behind that big rock and then disappeared. Another one of the can air by ponies. There's, there's loads around here, probably. I wonder what I thought. Maybe more, I don't know. No, it's been, a, it's been a good night. Good, tr good uh, trip, this one. As always, we say in every video, as we tend to nothing left behind. Leave no trace. There's our neighbours there. A quick last look around. Spectacular location. Beautiful. Well, guys, we just left the Boffy and we're making our way up back up there past Melly and Clean Lake. That's us back of the car now. Me, Simon, Danny. See you soon, man. Nice to meet. See you soon. See you soon. Awesome camp that was, wasn't it? Yeah. Another couple of summits bagged. Right, we'll see you on the next one. Right, cheers. Bye see for now. Toodaloo. Bye. YouTube, we love you. Don't forget Rush Outside Wales. Boop. Subscribe, like. Love you, long time.